Kyan Hugh sits across a narrow oaken table, shackled to a high-backed fur chair. Her jailers have stripped her of her salted leathers and gowned her in silk and iron. Her dear falcon face, broken nose, bronze cheeks, brown eyes, is unmarked. But all the might has gone from her body, all the armor-bearing brawn. She has been starved. Baru tries to speak, to strike first, but words abandon her. There's too much to say, or only one thing to say, and no way to say it. In the silence, Ty and Hugh lift their eyes. Your Excellence, she says, and bows her head as if she were still Field General and Baru still the fairer hand. Baru sets her blade down between them, like a little wall, just below the wine her servants left, and sits in the other chair. She wants more than all else to smile and to answer the last thing Tai and Hugh ever said to her, that smiling, sleepy greeting. Hello. Hello yourself, Imuira, Kuyi, La. In an orgy of self-punishment between swallows of salt, She looked up exactly what it meant to be sure of her memory. It brought her as close to the edge as she has ever come. But it would only be mockery. How could you let this happen? She asks herself. How could you let it be, knowing who you were? What role you were to play. You could have turned away and spared yourself. But you did not. She never could have. Ty and Hugh watches her with desert eyes. Are you here to kill me? She asks. Death may be the greatest hope she has left. No, Baru says. That happens tomorrow. You will be drowned by the rising tide, so the throne may say the moon and stars judged you. Falkrest loves to align itself with such laws. I see. Tai and Hugh nods, as if this were a right and proper thing. Will my death bring advantage to Baru Fisher, my sworn lord? Baru pours red wine with a steady hand, filling one cup, then the other. She wants to beg, to rage. Stop it! Abjure me! Repudiate me. Call me false. Curse my name. Give me anything. Anything but this loyal call. It will bring me advantage, she says. It is the last test of my loyalty to the throne. Let me propose a toast. Then, Tai and Hugh says, and there is no sarcasm in her eyes, no hint of anger to soften the blow. To your unshakable loyalty. Baru looks left so that Tai and Hugh blinks away for a moment, out of vision but not out of memory, 
gone from sight, but not from the vanguard at Sirach, her charger galloping wide in a run of chestnut, bloody face lifted towards Sparrow's spyglass, mailed fists clutching Kettleson's banner in triumph. Her accountant's mind makes note. Turning away hides the woman, but not the pain. Perhaps Tyne Hugh has snatched up the blade on the table while she looked away. Perhaps death is coming down through her blindness, and she will never know it. But a moment passes, and no strike comes. Baru turns back to the table, back to awareness of Tyne Hugh. The field general watches her in silence. Baru moves a glass of wine across the table, crosswise. I wanted to explain, she says, so you would know what you will die for. I thought I owed you that. Already she sounds like one of them, a full crusty creature, a traitor to her own childhood. Ty and Hugh takes up the glass in calloused hands, straining her shackles play. You owe me nothing. I saw her to die for you. She shrugs precisely. The wine in her glass barely moves. So it will be. I see your strategy, Tyne Hugh, Baru thinks. I see the order of battle. You go to your death with exquisite loyalty. I measure my treason against your faith. And it eats me up, now and for the rest of my life. It is the most hurt you can manage. And it will work. There is no emperor upon the faceless throne, she says. Behind the mask and the figurehead is a committee, a closed council, each member holds a secret that could destroy another, Tyne Hugh says. So the throne's members are bound to each other by fear. And you were offered a seat at the price of a dangerous service, raising false rebellion in Arduin, so the throne could weed out the disloyal. You believe the masquerade would inevitably reconquer Arduin and you thought you could ease the cost in blood. I know. How? She whispers. How could you know? Your red-haired handler thought it safe to explain these things to a dead woman. It was a long journey east. Again, Tyne Hugh shrugs. Again, her wine lies still, as if boasting of her precision in all things. I wanted to understand the woman behind the mask I knew. I spoke with him at length. Baru closes her eyes. She must have known what she was giving a peritor in exchange, just as she knew what she was doing at Sirach, at the fullest road. Of course she knew. Of course she knew. And what did he ask in return? What was it safe for a dead woman to tell? 
Ty and Hugh's mouth does not move, but her eyes tighten in a little smile. Tell me. Baru leans across the table, across the blade. Tell me what secrets you gave the throne. Or does your play at loyalty not extend so far? Ty and Hugh does not flinch. What secrets could I know about Baru Fisher? What truth did you ever give me? She laughs quietly. You were wise. You trusted only yourself. There was one, Baru says, her voice terrible to her own ears, burdened with a memory of crimes more beautiful and dear than rebellion or treachery. Ty and Hugh looks at her own hands. She sets her glass down on the table, motion by motion, as if in awe of the working of her joints. There was that. She nods thoughtfully. But I wondered, should I mention it? Would he care to know a lie? How would knowing a lie serve the purposes of the throne which seeks to bind the truth? There was that, that one night, and everything it acknowledged. It was no lie. Baru whispers. I wondered that in the long nights after Sirach, Tyne Hugh whispers in return. I wondered if you could be fool enough to fall that way, even knowing what you were meant to do. I wondered if all the things you whispered in the night Instead of a clever act, the way to blind me. I did not think you a fool, Baru Fisher. But of course, I did not think myself a fool either. And yet I was. She leans forward, palms flat, the sandy ruin of her close shorn hair still damp with seawater. Her nearness summons sedition in Baru's chest. So I told him, she says. So the throne has its secret. Tyne Hugh has her small revenge. Hot iron for the sodomite, and for tribadists, a knife. Not now, of course. Not while she is loyal. But if Baru Cormorant ever turns, ever slips, ever becomes a threat, the knife. I have counsel for you, now that we've both struck our blows, Tyne Hugh says. She leans forward on arms still corded with a memory of strength. And Baru remembers her leaning across the map table at full jack, pointing to weakness here, there. As your general, look where your counsel has taken you. Baru thinks bitterly, why should I listen?
but Tyne Hugh did not defeat herself. Speak, Baru says. Tyne Hugh's broad shoulders tighten. You should kill me to defy the throne and secure your power. Have you heard nothing? Baru snaps. Did their man confuse you? I prove my loyalty by killing you, Hugh. It would be no defiance. You will fail, Tyne Hugh says. They know it. They hope for you to fail. In the lamplight, the wine between them looks as clotted as old blood. I need only give an order, Baru says, and then, with a taunting spite, she does not feel. I can give hard orders, Duchess. You need to watch it happen, unflinching, unmoved. And you cannot. Tyne Hugh looks into the empty distance, watching her own death. You will see the tide rising, and you will beg for them to spare me. They will agree. They will grant you your ascension, and they will keep me as a pet, knowing you will do anything to keep me from harm. I will be their hold on you. A flicker like the ghost of a smile at the edge of her lips. Better for you, she says, if you had let me die at Ciroc. Better if you had never tried to save me. Baru wants to protest, but it chills like truth. It has been in her dreams these past months, as she wondered what her final test would be. Spare her. Spare her. I will do anything to spare her. But they have the secret they need, Baru protests. You gave it to them. They have a halt. They would prefer something more concrete. They fear you, Baru Fisher. They fear your wit, your charisma, your power to raise the commoner. They fear the loyalty you command. Without a powerful secret to bind you, something more than hearsay and a curious absence of lovers. They fear the strength you will have among them. Pine Hugh closes her eyes. He told me none of this. He told me he expected you to execute me without a second thought. But you taught me to listen to myself and I sensed a lie. The little distance across the table maddens like a rotten tooth. Baru wants to reach out to her across all the blood and treachery between them. Wants to reach back across the months to winter on the forage line. Why would you tell me this? She asks. Why would you give me anything? Because it was no lie. Tiny Hugh whispers and turns away. Baru sits and stares 
and tries to make something of the hollow in her chest. Her mind gnaws at all of it. Could it be that Tyn Hugh is desperate to live and hopes to trick Bardo into sparing her? No, no, she would have no care for her own life, not with Voljak and Arwen lost. But could she be working to sabotage Bardo's ascension, manipulating her into showing disloyalty to the throne? Could this all be the throne's test, like the boy on the battlements, played out through a broken tined hue? She sips at her wine, pretending calm, and grips the edge of a cold truth. She came down here to speak with Tyne Hugh because she hoped it would make it easier to watch her die. Hoped there would be hate, shouting, vows of undying revenge, an enemy woman for her to drown tomorrow. She could live, Barrow thinks. I would still have the throne. They would sit easier for it, knowing I could be kept tame, and with time, she might forgive me. Tyne Hugh's shoulders begin to shake. Barrow's stomach curls. This, of all things, she hoped not to see. The general of Arduin's armies broken and cast low. Death would be better. But Tyne Hugh does not cry. She chuckles, rasping, low. The hope. <laughs> the hope of Arduin she calls, as if rallying an invisible shield wall. Justice from a fairer hand. And then she laughs, trembling with her mirth, quaking in her shackles, her eyes locked on Baro. <laughs> the hope, the hope of Arduin. It goes on and on, and after a moment Baru finds it too much to take. She turns her chair to the left, so that the duchess tied hue falls away into nothingness, and the howl of her laughter reaches Baru only as an echo. The hope of Arduin, she thinks. and understands Tyne Hugh's game. The Duchess is still fighting. The blade is still on the table in the empty place to her right. Baru finishes her wine in slow silence. She wonders if Tyne Hugh knows about her wound, whether she laughs and rails even now, and takes Baru's answering silence for strength.